What's up, guitar enthusiastics or enthusiasts? This is Joseph Gabaldon, and today I'm bringing you a review on this Ibanez artist. This is the AM70 made in Japan. This one's got the original pickups, the original electronics, nothing has been altered. It is, let me see, Crafting Japan 1986. Okay, so a couple things about this guitar. I'm not a big fan of hollow body guitars. I have a couple, but I'm not really much of a fan, and I'll tell you why. Usually hollow body guitars don't seem very comfortable to me because they are usually very bulky in, in 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 two different ways they are usually like larger this way and also thicker more like an acoustic guitar would be which makes sense right because they they are supposed to get these tonal qualities that come from this resonance but I'm not really comfortable holding them it's like they can never be my main guitar because of that it, they feel really I feel like I have two guitars instead of one, so there's something uncomfortable for me to uh, about them. This one is not the case. This is extremely comfortable because A, it's basically as thick as a regular guitar, and even though the video may be deceiving, a little deceiving, the from this side to this side, it's not much larger than your regular Les Paul or Strat. It's just slightly longer, uh, which means that it it feels almost like a regular electric to me, and that's why I when I picked it up, I felt like you know this now you're talking I can play this guitar. Uh, so, a couple things about it: the pickups are Ibanez branded. Um, normally, when I see a guitar brand making their own pickups, I get I get I guess I get a bit skeptical. Maybe this is just because I'm used to not seeing that, and when I see it, I feel I automatically think, well, they are trying to save a buck, and maybe they're not gonna make the best job because there's brands that only do that all day long, and uh, and they build guitars instead, and I mean, and these guys build guitars instead. Well, not the case. Uh, every time that I see a guitar. An Ibanez guitar with Ibanez pickups, I really like the way they sound. Um, I, have, I have to make a disclaimer, uh, which is that I have not tried many of their low-level Indonesian guitars where they also may make their own pickups, so I'm, I'm really out, out of that. I'm talking more about the Japanese ones, where, I'm, especially in the late 80s, no, actually be even before in the 70s as well, they made their own pickups in many of their models. Well, this one is really, really, really good. It sounds great on, you know, when you when you use it as a clean guitar, it sounds fantastic. Obviously, you get all the woody type of tone that we all love uh, to hear from a, from a um, guitar like this. But when you hit the distortion, you get a ton of sust a sustain, and this one, this guitar really, really, really screams, which I like a lot because I use harmonics and I, I play a lot of legato and uh, having high, um, being able to use high gain from time to time is very pleasant to me and very comfortable with it. This one holds it really well. Although this is a, a hollow body guitar, a semi hollow body guitar, and they are usually kind of traditional in the way they build them, this one's got a balut. Uh, there you go. You see this little indentation. Uh, what happens is many of these guitars with a with an angle headstock, when they when they get dropped, because this is the the weakest point on the guitar, when they get dropped, they they break on this area. But by adding this little guy over here, you're strengthening this. Part of the guitar so if it drops the chances that it's gonna break like that uh, get reduced 
well, nothing guarantees anything. That definitely helps. Other, other than that, the bridge is also a little bit of, of, an, of on a, an strange bridge. It's made also by Ibanez. Um, but I really like it. I think it's a genius invention because if you notice this, this can push the bridge a little more further away from the from the neck or closer. And that what, what that does is you know sometimes you have intonation problems and when you adjust it you run out you run out of space. What what this does is it gives you a, a lot of extra space if you need it. So this bridge is something is a is something else. It's really a good. Uh, inton intonation with this guitar is great, sustain is great, sound is great. Uh, I'm I'm really thrilled by it. The looks are fantastic. I don't think I'm making it any justice. I'm only getting the reflections. It's a nice top. If you buy one of these, one of the things that you need to look at outside of the obvious neck being warped or frets being completely worn out is this. This is not a good idea. This is not the best engineering idea when, when you're building a guitar with a hollow body. And here's why. Let me see if I can get you a, a close-up where you see this thing. Many of these guitars, because the jack is here and you move the jack and you plug it in and you, you know, it wiggle a little bit sometimes when you plug it in or out, or you may pull a cable at some point. What it does is it breaks the top. So you'll see many of these guitars with cracks around this area. That's something you want to look for when you're buying it. Um, later on, they made a wise change and they started putting the jack input some place in the edge. If you pull it there, there's, nothing's going to happen and it's a much stronger place. The top is something that you don't really want to have mess with. This one has a crack. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show it to you. No, I'm getting too many reflections. But it's got a little crack, nothing serious. But I've seen really, really, really bad ones. So every time that you're checking eBay or any site where you want to buy them, make sure that you spot this little guy over here and there's nothing and that there's nothing funny around other than that guitar plays great neck is I would say in the thicker side if you compare it to an electric guitar if you compare it to another hollow body if you're used to playing hollow bodies it's gonna feel I would say in my in my humble opinion it's gonna feel average nothing not, not particularly thick or thin and uh, uh, one one more thing that I really liked is the um, the neck is a bit flatter than most um, than most hollow body or semi hollow body guitars that I've played. That means that it's you, you can play fast really easily on this one. It's really easy guitar to adjust. It's it's one of these forgotten jewels. Oh, and the best thing is the price. I get this one really cheap and uh, I know they are going up, up on price right now uh, like four or five years ago you could get something like this for between 400 to 600 now they are asking on eBay sometimes 1200 like they, they raised it up to the you know Japanese craftsmanship your Japanese craftsmanship average price but from time to time you're gonna find one that's not really overpriced if you if you have the patience to look into Craigslist and if you look at Guitar Center used things like that. Uh, this one I got for 500, I think, not long ago. So I was lucky there because it's in great condition. There was an original case for this model as well. So that's something you want to ask for or look for in case you you buy one of them. And that really changes also the value of the instrument if you have the original one. And uh, other than that, I think I covered ev everything or most of it. Um, yeah, one more thing. The pickup selector is a three switch as expected, right? Because we have two humbuckers and it's located here. Which um, to me was a, a little unusual. I expected it where uh, less poles would be. 
but uh, I really like that it's here because when that's a problem that I have with my Les Pauls when I'm playing. If I get excited, I might hit the switch and just change the pickup configuration. Uh, so I really like them over there. That works best for me. Maybe that's, that, that doesn't work best for you. That's, that would be something interesting. Feel free to leave a comment and explain us why that feels great or not feels great or don't feel great for you. And I think this wraps it up. So here you have it again. This is the Ibanez AM70. If you are familiar with Ibanez guitars, then you probably know that the, the way they set up their uh, series goes uh, depends on their numbers, meaning the same model with a different number, like this one is the AM70. If you get the AM103, I think there's another model, or the 200, something like that, the, the larger the number, the better the model is supposed to be. Or it's got, it, sometimes there's real improvements to the instrument, better pickups, better hardware, better everything. Sometimes it's only cosmetic, so you wanna make a little bit of research there but uh, this one is only the 70. I think there's, uh, there's a couple more guitars from the same series that are lower than this one. Uh, but this one is, it feels top notch and it sounds top notch. Um, if you can find something similar or even lower, I would say if it's made in Japan, still very worth buying or looking into. They made, and this is this really is the last thing that I'm gonna tell you about this guitar. They made a different model that looked the same. I think it was called the 73, uh, and which had as the main difference a Floyd Rose type of bridge. It was made by Ibanez as well. It's, it, it was really bulky, and there was no locking nut. I have I had one of those in the past. It was great guitar, it was just like this one, but I had to block the, the tremolo because although I used the tremolo a lot, every time that I moved it, even if I was just doing like, a, you know, a nice vibrato, something really subtle, uh, the guitar would go out of tune immediately. Really bad, not like, a, you know, not like a little bit that you can hide with a band or anything. It was really, really, really seriously out of tune. Now, that could have been the one that I had only, and maybe this, the, the nut on the other ones was, was perfect or they stood in tune great, but just something to keep in the back of your head. There might be a chance that if you get the tremolo version, it will not stay in tune as well as you, you may want it to be. So this is it for this video. If, if you enjoyed my review, please feel free to leave a like. If you really liked it and you would like to stay in tune for future videos and um, playing demonstrations and things like that, uh, you're welcome to subscribe. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.